Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuveer. In this class, we will discuss about the pseudocode for gradient boosting. In our last class, we already discussed about uh, intuition about gradient boosting and the mathematics required for gradient boosting. So please watch our previous classes and come back here because we use all the concepts which we discussed in our previous class uh, in this class. So please follow us from the our playlist from the beginning so that you will have a better understanding of the complete machine learning models the link for the playlist is provided in the description below coming to today's concept uh, in our last class we used an example data set we take this data set and we will follow the example which we used in our last class uh, so understanding that example along with that we will follow our pseudocode that way we will get easily understand what's the pseudo code for a gradient boosting is the example data set which we consider here is bill amount and salary is the input and the tip amount is the output so this is the predicted value so what we have done in our gradient boosting is first our first model we we designed our first model what's our first model prediction is take the mean value of all our tip amount values so the mean value is taken as our first model prediction value so what's the mean value we got here is a 50 50 point something we are for equation simplicity we are make it as a 50 so our first model prediction is 50 50 50 50 50 so this is what we have done in our example coming to our pseudo code so our initialization step is this one f naught of x f zero of x means our zero th model first model is equal to this is the optimization problem we have to solve arg min of gamma so if you don't know what's optimization problems how to solve optimization problems in our first 10 classes we clearly discussed it hoping that you already watched all those classes we are following this okay so argument gamma sigma i is equal to 1 to n l of y comma gamma so this is our loss function which we used in gradient boosting what's the loss function we used in gradient boosting mean squared loss so mean squared loss means y minus gamma means a predicted value in our last class we used it as a y hat instead of that here we are using it as gamma so y minus gamma whole square this is our loss function mean squared loss function we do this for all the data points so don't forget that we do it for all the data points so how to what's the meaning of this uh, optimization for problem for what value of gamma we are having minimum of our loss that is the optimization problem that's given here how to solve this optimization problem one way is uh, differentiate this equation with respect to gamma and equate to zero this is one way and another way is we can apply gradient descent so we'll f because we are having only one variable we will use the differentiation method and solve the optimization problem so how to solve this is uh, differentiate with respect to gamma and equate to zero when you differentiate with respect to l y minus gamma whole square with respect to gamma that is equal to minus 2 into y minus gamma this is the differentiation value we got so substitute our data here and identify the gamma value so for first data point what's the y value 40 minus 2 into 40 minus gamma minus 2 into so we have to do the summation so this is our equation summation of all the points minus 55 minus gamma so minus 52 minus gamma minus 60 uh, minus 2 into 60 minus gamma minus 2 into 45 minus gamma that is equal to 0 so when we solve this uh, uh, equation phi gamma is equal to 252 gamma is equal to 252 by 5 that is equal to 50 point something we are taking it as a 50 value that is what we got here in our example when we discussed in our previous classes uh, intuition class uh, what's the mean value that is what we got here so first step uh, is this one initialization step uh. so coming to our second step after calculating the mean value what's the what's the second step we have done in our example class so we calculated the residual value y minus y hat 40 minus 50 that is equal to my minus 10 55 minus 50 5 2 10 minus 5 these are the residual values so in second step for m is equal to 1 to m so we we repeat this step for m models so if you are keep on adding the models we will repeat this step for m models in this second step we are having sub steps four different steps we have to repeat these steps for m models so what's the first step for i is equal to 1 to n means all the how many data points we have n data points five data points calculate the residual rim means residual of ith data point in nth model 
instead of calculating residual we can calculate pseudo residual why we are calculating pseudo residual discussion made in our previous class so so how we calculate the pseudo residual minus of deri derivative of loss function with respect to the prediction value here prediction is f of x i because uh, uh, ith point ith point f of x i with respect to x i okay here uh, for under for terminology purpose he has made it as f of x i you can keep it as y hat uh, ith point uh, any terminology we can use uh, that's why the residual value we calculate using f is equal to f my f of m minus one to model means previous value model based on that uh, we calculate the residual for first model we calculate using zero eighth model so we calculated the residual after that what we have done we applied a decision tree on this residual value this is the decision tree we got on this residual value minus 5 minus 10 comes to one side and 10 to 5 points comes to other side this is the decision tree we constructed on the residual values so next b model is a b point is find a regression tree to rim means residual values find the terminal regions so what's terminal regions is end values we call it as the end points we call it as terminal regions how many terminal regions we have leaf nodes we call it as terminal regions this is one terminal region this is another terminal region so how many terminal regions we had in this decision tree we are having to identify the terminal regions so terminal j mth model j means one two how many terminal regions we are having in this example we are having two terminal regions so j value will be one and two so next point what we have done is c for each terminal point identify the predicted value that is what we have done in our example this is a terminal point for this terminal point we have identified the predicted value what we have considered here mean value is considered as our predicted value means in this terminal point important point so in this terminal point we considered only these three data points that is very important in this terminal point we considered only these two data points and identify the new predicted value the same way for j is equal to each each terminal point compute gamma j m means j th predict j th terminal point in mth model identify the predicted value is equal to so the same equation arg min of gamma sigma the new point here is i is equal to 1 to n here x i belongs to terminal j m if our data point belongs to the terminal those points will be considered and identify the loss l of but another point we have to add here is y comma the new predicted value will be f of m minus 1 of x i means old predicted value plus gamma okay again how we solve this differentiate with respect to gamma and equate to 0 this is where this is the equation minus 2 55 these are the three points which we used in this equation so 55 minus previous model prediction 50 plus gamma minus 2 into second point 52 minus previous model play, uh, prediction 50 plus gamma 60 minus 50 plus gamma and equate to 0 and solve this gamma value gamma is equal to 17 by 3 that is equal to 5.6 that is the value we got in our example 5.6 mean value okay so after calculating the prediction value for each and every terminal node update our prediction value previous model prediction plus alpha into gamma jm alpha means learning rate we will take small jumps why we have to take small jumps clearly explained previously gamma jm this gamma means predicted value of uh, terminal t j m uh, that is very important if x uh, if the point belongs to terminal j m then use this gamma j m if the point belongs to another terminal use the terminal uh, gamma j m which we have considered for if this belongs to this one we use this gamma j m means we calculated gamma j m for each and every terminal so we have to use that gamma j m that is the meaning of this equation so update f of uh, m for each and every data point not only for one point x i this should be each and every data point so repeat this process for m models again calculate residual apply the decision tree again calculate new prediction values so on 
so on. So what's the third step is after applying M models, what's the final prediction we got that is taken as the output. So this is the pseudo code for a gradient boosting. So here we understand how to calculate gradient boosting algorithm for a regression models. So here now we will understand how we will get an intuition about how we can use this gradient boosting for a classification model. So here we give an intuition, we, we do not give a clear mathematical explanation and all those things. This intuition is enough for implementing our gradient boosting. So for the same data set we are taking as a binary values, we are not taking regression model, we are taking our classification model, 0 means negative data point, 1, 1, 1 means a positive points and a 0 means a negative point, uh, our first model. How many positive points we have? 3 points out of uh, 5 data points. What is the probability of uh, becoming a positive point? 0.6. Uh, so our first model taking prediction as a probability score as a 0.6. This is our prediction value. So the probability that this point belongs to 1 is a 0.6. The probability that this point belongs to 1 is 0.6. Initially we assigned a uh, all the values as a 0.6. So calculate the residual 0 minus 0.6 that is equal to minus 0.6, 1 minus 0 0.6, 0 0.4 like that we calculated the residual. Now the same thing what we have done in our uh, regression model, we apply our first decision tree on the residual values uh, and keeps on updating our predicted values. Uh, so what happens here, whenever we are applying new prediction, new decision trees and new models on our gradient boosting, uh, so keeps on updating our predictor uh, value. If our data point belongs to 1, our new prediction probability score keeps on updating towards 0 0.999 like that uh, because the probability of getting this point, uh, positive point it is 0 0.99 means uh, highest uh, probability of getting this as a uh, 1. The same way if the point is 0 means uh, our values moves towards 0 0.0000 like that. Uh, so our probability scores that are the prediction values we use in our gradient boosting. If it is near to 0 0.000 something, we predicted it as a negative point. Uh, if it is near to 0 0.9999 something, we predict it as a positive point. Above 0 0.5 we consider it as positive point, below 0 0.5 we consider it as a negative data point. This is how we use gradient boosting for classification models. Okay. Hope you understand the concept. If you have any questions in this class, please post your questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates. Thank you.